uh, for doing the, the different cropping strategies you want. Also the flipping uh, in different axes. Um, yeah, as I was mentioning, we, now it's uh, in 2D, image, 2D images, but now all these operators, uh, since uh, PyTorch, it's kind of uh, flexible. Um, it's very easy to, uh, to transform all these images to work in, in 3D uh, uh, tensors. Some examples of what you can see here, different transformations. So, and then uh, for the geometric transformations, uh, so all these uh, different uh, functionalities I was mentioning, they are kind of uh, high level, but also we have uh, an API, which is actually, this is the, the essence of a uh, cornea. Uh, I would say the core of cornea for ge geometry, which basically implements uh, the different, if, well, if you have uh, been working with uh, um, OpenCV, you will recognize very easily these functions that uh, basically allows you um, with, uh, yeah, using uh, this uh, curated API that from, from OpenCV, you can, you can very easily implement uh, at very low level uh, the image transformations. But here, the, the difference is, uh, again, um, all these functionalities, uh, they consume torch tensors, which means that these torch tensors could come, uh, for example, you, you, can, you can create it uh, no, from, from, from scratch uh, with uh, random values, but all these tensors could contain gradients, meaning that, for example, uh, in the case of the warp affine, so this function actually, it takes a, a multidimensional tensor and then an affine transformation. And actually this affine transformation, uh, as I said, you could create it randomly, but at the same time, you could get it directly from a ne neural network, meaning that uh, you could learn somehow the transformations to be applied and optimize those transformations based on whatever uh, your loss function is. So um, I would say that these, uh, these uh, low level functionalities uh, are also uh, very useful and are, are very inspired. Uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, uh, it's, it's a very known paper for geometry that's called a spatial transformer networks. And more or less uh, all these uh, operators and all the low level, of, even the low level operators in, in PyTorch are inspired on these papers. And then uh, this is uh, another um, topic that uh, we are growing right now, which is uh, 3D geometry. It's also part of the, this, uh, let's say, big, uh, small package for geometry. Uh, which uh, basically uh, here we have uh, some API uh, for to work with uh, pinhole and perspective cameras. Then we have uh, several uh, operators uh, to do conversion between different uh, 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 feeding systems to go uh, to co to convert uh, the, the the points coordinates to homogeneous systems. Uh, and then this API to to convert from. Uh, different uh, rotations, uh, conversions like rotation matrices, quaternions, axis angles. We can we have here some operators to normalize the two D and three D operations. Uh, sorry, uh, coordinates. Then we have uh, 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 very few, but uh, very useful uh, uh, at the same time uh, subpixel uh, operators, which basically um, what they do. It's, uh, for example, imagine that you have a, a heat map uh, with uh, some livelihood uh, of, um, for some key points. And then with uh, these uh, operators, you could extract uh, in a differentiable manner the, the 2D or even the 3D coordinates for that. And then with these coordinates, using any whatever um, geometric transformation, you could build on top of that any loss based on that geometry. And finally, uh, this is something that we have been uh, working recently. So uh, now we have also introduced uh, this epipolar uh, geometry package. And also um, uh, we are uh, now uh, introducing uh, several um, uh, operators uh, to work with, with uh, Lie algebra and different uh, utilities uh, to work uh, uh, with a structure for motion. Okay. And finally, the, we have this small vision loss package, which basically uh, have, 
actually it's a it's, it's a compilation that um that contains different uh, uh specific loss functions uh, for computer vision um, basically for image reconstruction uh semantic segmentation or to work uh, with heat maps as i was explaining now so basically um if you are aware, for example, one of the most popular here will be the focal loss, which is very uh, used now for semantic segmentation. And then all these metrics uh, for image reconstruction, like the structural similarity, similarity image or the PSNR uh, metric. So all these operators, uh, as I said, it's yeah, you, you can find uh, several implementations on internet, but here uh, what we try to do is, okay, since uh, again, you can find a lot of them. We try to compile here all of them and have it uh, test and and then uh, so that everyone can use it. Okay, so um, this was uh, more or less the different uh, features that we have uh, in Cornea. Okay, and uh, well, and first the different properties that we can make use of it. But now um, let's talk a bit. Uh, how do how do we use uh, Cornea? So first of all, uh, Cornea it's very easy to install. Okay, so Cornea it's basically a Python based package, and to install it very simple. So you can go to just uh, your terminal and then just do pip install Cornea, and then uh, you will get your the latest uh, release from the PyPatch uh, package manage system. So everything, um, well, we try to be aligned with uh, the different releases that uh, they do in PyTorch. So in each um, minor and ma major release, uh, we do a release. So we try to keep uh, the, the package update. But if you want to, um, you cannot wait for some feature we have, you can also download uh, from source, uh, Corny, and then you just, uh, well, if, if, if you have been working with uh, uh, Python, uh, you know that you can easily call the setup uh, script and then you, you, you will get installed uh, Cornea in your system. So, and the cool thing uh, uh, about Cornea is that uh, there is no dependency, so it's dependency free. The, the only, uh, obviously, the, the only dependency is PyTorch, but the cool thing is that um, you don't have to compile anything, we we have we, we are using all the the default operators uh, you can find in in PyTorch. So there is no CUDA or C code you have to install. So everything we try to keep it very plug and play so that you can very easily install Cornea and start working. And as I was mentioning. Um, Again, it's it's very simple to use. So since you have uh, Python 3.6 uh, in your system, you can very easily start working with Cornea. So uh, here in this snippet, uh, you you can see that uh, you just need to import Torch to declare your tensors, then import Cornea. And here um, you just uh, instantiate some tensors and you can see that uh, all these tensors can is what uh, our Cornea API will consume. So very simple. And as I've been explaining all the uh, during the talk, we have been trying to, to mimic the, the API uh, from OpenCV. So for example, let me show you a couple of examples uh, how seamless is the, the, the API of Cornea with OpenCV in this case. You can see that uh, we are making use of this uh, very known uh, Gaussian blur operation from OpenCV. And you can see on the bottom that uh, you, uh, using uh, the same functionality in Cornea, if, if you are familiar with OpenCV, you, the, the, to work with a Cornea, it's, it will be very easy. Because in the end, the API, it's, it's, it's very simple. We have the, the only intermediate step that uh, since uh, you know that in OpenCV they work uh, with uh, uh, NumPy arrays. Here we have these intermediate steps uh, to convert um, NumPy arrays uh, to Torch tensors. But in the end, the API it's, it's very similar. 
Another example uh, for the same with uh, using this uh, word perspective uh, uh, function. Um, yeah, again, so the you can see that the, that the API is very similar. We just need to load uh, an image uh, into an ampere array, then we convert it uh, to torch tensor, and this torch tensor will will be consumed by our corny API. So um, now, then uh, let's talk about uh, uh, to the about the, the ecosystem integration. So as I said before, uh, we have now this uh, data augmentation uh, API, which uh, basically mimics the the Torch Vision uh, API for data augmentation. So and in that sense, uh, that's why I, I put this slide here, since uh, in a sense uh, it's kind of integrated with uh, the the the, the, <clears throat> the ecosystem so that uh, anyone familiar with a torch vision can that has uh, some specific requirements like to to do the data augmentation uh, in the gpo or batch or if you want to back propagate through the through the data augmentation if you use Cornea, uh, again, it will be very easy to adapt your scripts uh, from Torch Vision to Cornea. So here, I, I'm not promoting to 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 not use uh, Torch Vision, but sometimes uh, uh, you have uh, one uh, might have uh, different uh, requirements. So that uh, why not having both version, versions? And then as part of uh, to explain about the, the ecosystem um, here uh, with this slide, um, well, in my case, uh, I use uh, this framework called uh, PyTorch Lining. But um, in this case, what I want to show in this slide that uh, Cornea, uh, since uh, you, you know uh, it's PyTorch based, uh, it's very uh, simple to, to implement any of the operators to to Python uh, to any PyTorch based uh, packets. And in this case, so. Uh, it's just an example showing that how easily you can use uh, Python's lining to manage or to handle all these uh, your uh, uh, training uh, models, and you can easily there plug the the data augmentation in this case. You can do other things, but here I wanted to show how you can implement uh, data augmentation using this uh, high-level framework. But um, again. Um, we are in the the same ecosystem uh, with these PyTors, so and why not using other other uh, frameworks? Uh, FastAI is another uh, framework that other collaborators uh, of the project I'm aware that are using, and it's very simple to to integrate in that. So if you have a chance, yeah, try FastAI. They have an, a, a nice API as well, uh, PyTorch Lightning. There are other packages like Ignite. Um, I don't remember the name, but I think that there are um, a few, or a few of them, at least uh, two or three more packages for doing a uh, high-level um, abstractions for training. And I'm pretty sure I haven't tried uh, all of them, but I'm pretty sure that it will be very easy to plug their cornea. And also um, another thing that we are starting to promote now. So you know, uh, probably you heard about uh, Kaggle competitions. It's a place, uh, well, it's a virtual place uh, where they handle, uh, well, probably now more uh, machine learning and deep learning competitions. So now Cornea, um, it's part of the Kaggle kernel. It means that um, if you want to, or if you are attending to any of these uh, competitions, um, you can you can get uh, Cornea there for free. Uh, because otherwise, uh, before you had to download it, uh, install it, and so on. But now you, you can get a uh, cornea there for free. So anyone can start playing uh, with uh, all these uh, functionalities and kernel on the Kaggle kernels. Okay, so this was the, the ecosystem. Uh, let me go now very quickly uh, uh, through the different examples. So the, these are, are basically some of the, the examples that uh, we show uh, in the paper we have about Cornea. I will very quickly go through that as well. But uh, in the paper, we show a couple or three examples uh, about uh, how, uh, how you can use a Cornea for, for backpropagate, okay? 
because uh, well, probably you have been noticing that I've been explaining a lot of stuff about computer vision that maybe you are asking yourself, okay, um, you can, this, these are the things that uh, you can do using any of the, of the existing library packages, okay? You can do it in PyTorch, okay? But uh, le le let's talk about the interesting stuff, no? Uh, how, how you can use that for back propagating or how to implement that within your neural, neural networks. So um, in this example, so uh, as I said, I will go with very quickly. If you want to get uh, more details about that, um, I, I, I invite you to, to, to go to the paper, which I will point you later, where everything is explained. You have the, your, uh, all the formulas there, some examples, uh, and all the, the results are there. But uh, basically, with these examples, what we wanted to show is that uh, how, how, to, how to solve uh, classical uh, problems. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the image registration problem, but seen uh, from the perspective of uh, optimization problem. But at the same time, using all these operat operators that I've been uh, mentioning during the talk, how to use them to, to, to build all the, the cost functions without uh, writing the, the, the derivative by hand, what, uh, which is what has uh, been done uh, uh, before. Okay. And, and in this case, it's a very simple example uh, to do image registration, with, <clears throat> which basically we kind of implemented a version of the multi-scale uh, for, for the Lucas Canada uh, strategy. So, and in here, uh, what we basically try to do is um, given uh, two images, uh, well, let me go back, maybe it will be more clear. Given two images, in this case, the source image and destination image, which uh, in the end, uh, by image registration, uh, what I mean is uh, we want to find the, the, the geometric transformation which, uh, give, uh, which will allow us to map uh, one pixel from one image to the other. And this, uh, in this case, we solve that uh, using the, the homography model. So in the end, what we try to do here is to optimize the, 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 uh, the, the model, in this case, uh, or find that the homography that will uh, make this possible. So, and here, um, as I said, uh, this we implemented a multi-scale version. So from left to right, uh, you can see the, the evolution of the algorithm. So. Um, you will see that uh, in so and at the level one, which is the we started from the lower resolution, then we go we went up uh, to the higher resolution. You will see in the in the third row that the images are, are starting to to be aligned, which is more or less the the, the final goal of the, of this uh, problem. And all this uh, it has been uh, using all the operators uh, in Cornea in the geometry packages. Uh, this one uh, for uh, using the world perspective, and then applying some uh, uh, photometric losses on that. A very similar example is uh, for uh, multi-view depth estimation. So here we try to do kind of the same, but here we were assuming that uh, we, we already have uh, images from different point of views and the calibration of uh, the, 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 the cameras, meaning that we have the, the intrinsics and also the extrinsics, and we, what we wanted here to find is the, the depth uh, of the reference image. And in a very uh, similar strategy of the, the previous uh, problem as I was explaining for the image registration, so we designed these uh, laws uh, based on the image uh, transformation. And finally, the, 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 fi the final example I want to show here it's, uh, it's about local feature detections. So here um, in this example, I think this, this is a very interesting example. Um, at the first time we, when we implemented that, it was like a, a crazy idea. And, but in the end, it's very cool because imagine that uh, you have these two images from two different uh, domains, okay? And let's say that you want to optimize uh, the two images so that at the, the algorithm that um, is doing a local feature detection and then matching will, be, will, will tell you, okay, these two images are the same. So in the end, 
uh, this is what it's called uh, an adversarial tag. So you will uh, try to, to, to fake the, the, the algorithm, okay? And here again, we are, we're using a, one of the most classical algorithms for local feature detection, which is SIFT. And we make use the, the property of, um, of the differentiability. So here, let me go uh, step by step. So from, from the two previous images, we compute uh, some uh, features on that. And then uh, we have uh, designed these laws uh, based on the, on the feature detection, description, and matching which finally, um, in this case, we optimize the, the images. Uh, and when I say optimize the images, I, I mean the pixels. We have been uh, um, modifying the pixels, okay? So that the algorithm in the end tell us, okay, these two images are equal. And if you notice here, you can see that there are like small uh, bright changes in the image, okay? that uh, it's a result of the optimization optimization problem but then if you run here um one of these uh, uh pipeline for for matching features um this algorithm will tell you that these two images in the end are the same but if you see it now clearly you can you can see that it that's not true okay so this is one example of how you can use a cornea for classical problems in this last case i think to me it's the most interesting one uh, to fake uh, some this uh, no to fake these classical pipelines that are we have been working uh, for a while, but also it could be also um, a way. For example, because you know that all these uh, existing algorithms they have a lot of parameters, which is now uh, using uh, the the property of, uh, of uh, uh, differentiation. Uh, one can. Uh, easily optimize uh, in automatic way all these parameters. So this is another interesting uh, property about using all these things in Cordia. Okay, so um, this, uh, this uh, was the, the, the different examples for back propagation, okay? Now uh, let me introduce uh, very quickly the, the, the ecosystem. So as I said, uh, Cornea is an open source library. So, and with that, we have been building, uh, creating this ecosystem, let's call it community. Okay. So Cornea, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an open source package that uh, you can find it in GitHub. So it has been uh, available there now for two years. We have uh, up to 2,500 stars in GitHub, uh, more than 260 forks and up to 50 contributors. Okay, so the co the community it's kind of active. Um, we have an an app to license, which means that basically you can do anything <laughs> with the library. You can uh, uh, fork it, copy, use it for commercial purposes. Uh, we're very open to that. So, and finally we have what we call this. Uh, Planet Cornea, which is, um, well, once you have the, the slides, um, basically you will see there in the Wikipedia that we have a compilation of the different projects that are using Cornea. This list uh, is starting to grow more and more. We are noticing that uh, a lot of people is using now uh, Cornea in their uh, research uh, projects mostly. And also uh, I would say now that Mm, at least that we know uh, there are like uh, probably up to 10, 20 different papers that are already mentioning that or they claim that use Cornea within their uh, implementations. So I will say that uh, the, the community is growing. And yeah, and just here, as I said, so Cornea, um, it's more or less two years old. Um, it started first as a project that was called PyTorch geometry by that time, which uh, if you remember when I was explaining the, about the geometry package, it, we were doing just very basic uh, image transformations. So in this project, uh, it, it was started uh, yeah, two years ago that was presented at the PyTorch uh, developers conference the first year. Um, yeah, and yeah, this project also to notice that it's under the, the OpenCV foundation, which uh, 
well, basically, the, I started this project with uh, Gary Bratsky, which is the 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 create well, father creator. <laughs> I don't know how you want to call it of OpenCV. So he was mentoring me during this project, and yeah, and that's more or less uh, the reason of all this uh, evolution uh, to try to convert to OpenCV. And then at some point uh, we wrote uh, this paper, which is well, the, the, it's the name of the library, Cornea, that was uh, accepted at the Winter uh, Conference on Applications for Computer Vision uh, that uh, happened a few months ago. Uh, the paper is, is an archive, um, just uh, check it out. Now we just submitted uh, with uh, the help of uh, Francesc as well. Uh, the journal version of it, we, we added uh, way more examples. We we did more experiments in, ter in terms of uh, time performance. I hope that will be uh, soon out as well. And then uh, also to mention that uh, different organizations are covering the project, uh, PyTorch itself. So uh, the Cornea, if you check it out in PyTorch uh, uh, website, it's 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 one of the the official uh, libraries in in of the the ecosystem. We also are backed up by AWS since they are giving some resources for testing the code. We try to keep the code uh, very well tested, um, documented, and also other institutes like uh, you know uh, well, uh, since I'm here now at the Robotics Institute, some sort there is some well, there is some support. Other organizations, startups, they use they are using it. And as well, uh, the 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 Open City Foundation, the CBC, etc. Then uh, future plans. Uh, we are ten minutes uh, to finish the first part. Um, next step. So we are trying to grow, as I was explaining, uh, on the three D transformations because we have seen uh, a lot of potential use cases in there, mostly for uh, medical imaging which uh, um, most of the time they use uh, with uh, 3D volumes. Then uh, probably more for the, the optimization side, uh, we want to work on the Torch scriptable. It's the just-in-time compilation thing I was mentioning that will help uh, to put in product more uh, tools and improve the performance. And finally, another use case that we have been asked um, uh, very often, it's a structure from motion, which I guess could be somehow uh, related uh, to, to to robotics as well. Okay, and yeah, and again, um, we are open source. We are an open community. Um, if anytime you want to contribute anything, um, just let us know. And just to uh, start finishing this part. Um, I, 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 during the hands-on, I, I will go through all this, but let me just uh, explain very quickly. Um, for discussion, we make use of the PyTorch uh, Discourse um, uh, forum. So uh, if you have been working with PyTorch, uh, there is a large community right now that uh, they, they basically uh, um, uh, ask questions and answer questions in their forums, and they are very, very active. So if you have any question about Cornea, just uh, use uh, their system. We have a tag there, so we will try to answer. Or if it's not any of us, something, someone from the community. And then finally, and uh, the documents. So for the code, we have an auto-generated um, documentation. Okay, every time that we make a pull request or merge, um, also release, the documentation, the online documentation, it's updated. So I'm gonna go through later to show you or uh, how to manage to, to get in there. And then finally, um, uh, for people that it's more uh, interested in contributing to Cornea, um, what well the first recommendation uh, we try to give all the time is that uh, contributing doesn't mean at all uh, sending a pull request with a code. Sometimes it's just as easy like to well first of all uh, try to use it because uh, well we hope that no but uh, it's 
it's true that it's off, uh, well often you um, there are bugs in the library or maybe there are some functionalities that you would like to have so i i, I like to say that uh, contributing it's also very, very simple as opening an issue in github it's very simple to open an issue it's just a button and you write uh, whatever you have to say there if it's something it's not working or it, or if there is something that you want in the library that it's not there yet. So there are different ways of contributing to open source projects, which I think that it's very important. And finally, um, yeah, well, all this thing that I just tried to summarize, it's written in this uh, contribution uh, uh, guide that we have. You have the link here. So yeah, I just invite you to go there, read it, and then, so yeah, this will be probably the the, the second part of this session. Um, in Cornea, uh, we have uh, a whole repository with different examples uh, using uh, collapse. That yeah, we we will show it right now. And then also within the uh, online documentation, we have um, uh, different uh, auto-generated uh, tutorials, which are more or less very simple tutorials. And I think that's it. Um, so yeah, um, just uh, feel free to go to cornea.org. You will get there um, all the information, all the links to all these things I've been mentioning are there to the paper, GitHub, uh, examples, tutorials, anything. And also if you are in Twitter, we try to be very active in Twitter. So yeah, just follow us or if you are using cornea or you have any complaint um i would say that twitter it's more or less the, the channel we use right now to communicate with the rest of the world and of course uh yeah uh, just uh if you have any question or anything go to github uh, just check the code out or yeah feel free okay so this is the first part um I don't know if you have any question. Um, I think now would be the, the best time uh, to ask questions about this first part. Um, okay. Let's uh, I think I see some questions here. Uh, okay. Um, First question, does Cornea use any C code internally using Python interface? No, uh, well, not directly because, uh, so as I said, we have, we were using uh, uh, the compiled version of PyTorch that you can easily can get from pip or conda. So we don't compile any code. So, but uh, implicitly, we, of course, we are, we are using the, the, all the internal C and C++ code that PyTorch uses. But, uh, but we don't have any specific uh, C or C++ code in Cornea. So once you download, uh, once you have PyTorch in your system, we di directly use uh, that uh, version. We don't compile anything. I'm not sure if it does uh, respond your question. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know, uh, any other questions? So, yeah. Mm. Otherwise, maybe I think, I, well, I can continue. And if you have uh, questions, yeah, just leave it here in the chat. I uh, will try to check it out. So, okay, let me uh, share again the screen. Okay, so let's start the, the second part. Okay, this first part, it was yeah, more or less an introduction of the, the project, what we can do with uh, Cornea. Okay, so, and now let's uh, move to a more uh, practical uh, session. Okay, I know that uh, later you have a full practical session uh, to implement, uh, I'm not sure what, but probably you will work uh, uh, 
with uh, some neural networks, train neural networks. I'm not sure if it's PyTorch, but maybe if it's PyTorch, you could maybe try to use Cornea for some of the, the operations. But uh, as to the instructors, I don't want to make a mess here. But yeah, but so what I'm going to do now, it's uh, first of all, um, let's go to the website, okay? So it's cornea.org, but it will map to GitHub. But here, okay, as you see, probably this will be the the, start, the, the entry point. If you want to work with Cornea, you have uh, yeah, some explanations here. Uh, we tried, it's a bit outdated, but we tried to update it uh, with uh, some node releases or any new you have. Very small uh, installation instructions. Uh, also um, links uh, to the paper, the different well, organizations. But the interesting thing here is first uh, the documentation. Then we have links to, to the tutorials, the discussion forum I was mentioning, and final to the GitHub. So uh, let's go first to the documentation. So this is the documentation uh, uh, we auto-generate uh, using Sphinx. As, as, as Sphinx, it's a, it's a framework uh, for generating on online documentation. Well, not online. Uh, you can uh, generate it and have it in local, but then using other tools or services like Read the Docs, which is the case, you can make it uh, for free uh, online. So as uh, uh, Finch, uh, well, le let me show. Yeah, I didn't have prepared that, but I, I will show you because it's it's maybe it's interesting for you to know about it. But um, Sphinx it has its own format uh, that uh, when you are coding, so you can write already the documentation in the source code. And then uh, using this uh, Sphinx framework, it will compile uh, somehow the code and will generate uh, automatically uh, this very nice uh, uh, documentation you are seeing now. So uh, here uh, in the Cornea documentation, uh, we have, um, you know, well, we have the, some instructions uh, about how we install, uh, some introductions about the different features, which probably have to be updated again, and some tutorials. Uh, I'll leave it for later. <clears throat> and then we have uh, the package reference. So this is what I, I was mentioning that uh, since uh, we have all the code documented and now um, for free or almost for free, then we go, for example, to the color package and go to the color space conversions. You will see here that uh, we have all the code with a very nice docu documentation, okay? Um, we, we are starting to use uh, something that's called typing that it's very cool because you know that uh, Python is a, uh, it's an interpret uh, language and it wasn't meant to have types. So they introduce now this cool feature that's called typing and you can type actually all the parameters. So in here, in this case, this RGB to BGR function, you can see here, for example, that uh, you could require that some, some parameters have uh, types in this case, uh, which is most of the case uh, for cornea. We, we we type it as a torch tensor, so we tell with return time, which is a torch tensor again, okay? And you will see that the structure for the documentation, it's it's very simple, clean. I'm not sure, but um, some of them we should have, uh, let me see if they can find, okay. Yeah, that one, for example. This uh, uh, ZC, I mean, um, Normalization is something that uh, was introduced a couple of months ago for, for uh, by a, a random contributor. So it happens that sometimes um, just a random guy opens a pull request and says, OK, I implemented that. And that's cool. It, that's how the open source work. And that's the, the beautiful thing, I think, about uh, open source and uh, collaborations. So uh, in this case, uh, as I mean, uh, you can see here that 
uh, again, you have uh, all the, the input parameters with all the types. Okay. We can uh, we have, uh, well, we try all the time to keep all the parameters well documented, saying what it is. It's thing that the, the shapes that we expect to have for the different parameters. Um, the red, well, the, yeah, the explanation what the return type should be, the type itself, and then small snippets. Um, okay, you probably noticed that we don't have uh, all this uh, complete documentation for all the functions because it's uh, you know a lot of work. We have now probably up to 150 functions in the whole library, so it's kind of difficult to to maintain everything. The, let's say we don't have enough resources to do that. So since all the the core uh, collaborators. We have other things to do. So, in fact, we use th this as a tool for uh, our research, but it's not our full time job. We do it um, in our spare time, basically. And yeah, again, and this is another kind of uh, collaboration that uh, it's very simple just to update or improve a documentation, which is um, very welcome if you are interested in to do that. But yeah. Basically, the documentation is very simple. Um, yeah. In some of them, we have um, even the, the formulas for each of the modules. We try to keep it very organized. Probably let me go to the geometry, which is the, the big uh, uh, package. Um, mm -mm, transformation here. So in here. You will see that it's it's, pre it's pretty much the same. Some of them will have uh, already some link uh, examples. Yeah. And also another cool thing that if, for example, if you are interested in this uh, warp uh, perspective function and you say, okay, um, I'm fine, but what's happening here? You have even the, the possibility to, to directly go to the, the code, uh, to the source code. So a spins already uh, embeds the code here. You will see that it's very simple. Okay. What else? Um, and then uh, apart from the package reference, we have <clears throat> again here uh, some instructions about uh, how to contribute. Some of well, just inf uh, general information, uh, general questions that we got sometime. That. Um, yeah. What else? Okay, so this is more or less the the big picture about uh, the documentation. I, I said that uh, we have some tutorials, so let's go there. Um, let me show first what uh, we call it the hello world for Cornium, and you will see that well. Uh, during the presentation, I already showed uh, some uh, small examples about how to start using Cornea. But um, here, if you want to get uh, more ideas uh, how to do it, uh, just uh, yeah, go, go uh, one by one, and we try. Well, it's not fully uh, explained, but uh, you have at least some more details that how to do but basically that the 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 the, hi the highlights here is that um we you we try to use or well we try to keep all uh, the time as i said uh, with open cv so we show all the examples uh in this case uh about uh, how to load uh, an image with open cv okay using the inbreed function from open cv which in that case will generate uh, an ampere rate will return an ampere rate with uh, the layout uh, first uh, containing the, the height, the width, and channels. But uh, probably, well, there is another problem uh, from uh, OpenCV. But first of all, uh, what we do, since I'm in PyTorch, usually all the operators are in the layout of a uh, batch, channel, height, width. We have uh, this, we did in the end, it's a, it, in, if, if you see the implementation, it's two lines of code that it's but it's very useful just to cast 
NumPy arrays uh, already to start working with uh, towards tensors, just permutes uh, uh, the axis, but it's very, it's very handy. And then, so you can use this image to tensor. And then, as you see, you have already your tensor in, in the, the PyTorch data structures scheme. And then, um, as I was mentioning, uh, OpenCV, um, if you have been working with that, um, you know that open images in BGR. So basically, they permute the, the last uh, channel in the, in the color uh, uh, dimension. So it's annoying. We know, every, know everyone <laughs> know that, but it's what it is. So yeah, in, in this case, um, since we want to, to visualize this image, um, yeah, we, we already have this implementation for VGR to RGB. So this uh, tensor that uh, we casted at first, which is XVGR, we can put it uh, inside this uh, cornea VGR to RGB and we'll produce another tensor that internally will flip the, the last uh, dimension containing the channel so that now we will have back the, the image RTV. So um, with this, we will have this uh, image as a terse tensor, but what now? Um, if we want to visualize uh, this image using, well, in this case, uh, I'm using matplotlib so that I can embed here the, the, the visualization. But if you are doing some applications, uh, in your machine, you can use also the visualizer for uh, of OpenCV, which it's uh, it's also very very easy to use. Um, but will be the same. So usually, all these visualization tools they require in general. Uh, I'm not aware about uh, all of them, but some of them uh, they require you to uh, to uh, to provide uh, the NumPy array. Uh, well the image in an AMP array. So, and again, we have this other handy tool that uh, to, uh, to cast back a, a tensor, a touch tensor to an AMP array. So, and you see here that, um, well, another, another a small comment that, uh, so usually all the, the operators uh, in Cornea, we, uh, we assume since uh, the main purpose uh, for the library, it's uh, for training. Um, the, 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 the main assumption we do is that uh, all the, the, the data types are at least a floating point, okay? Uh, the very basic uh, 32, we support CD, CD4, and then now we, uh, we are starting to explore also a 16, a half precision. But uh, yeah, that's the main, let's say, requirement at some extent. Um, that all the, the tensors there that you, that you uh, use uh, with cornea should be at least in uh, in some sort of uh, floating point point representation. Okay, I was saying that because here, uh, if you see uh, that this tensor to image, um, we call this byte, which uh, it's uh, the function. Uh, so this xRGB, uh, it's still a, a torch tensor. So byte it just will cast uh, to U int eight uh, uh, precision, okay? And then uh, this tensor image, uh, what basically we'll do here, if you see the typing, it will cast back the tensor to an, an MPRA. And then uh, finally, here it's uh, just the standard thing, yeah, using a matplotlib. Um, yeah, there is no secret here in the left, uh, well, the first uh, subplot, we have the, the BGR version, and then the second one, the, the RTB that we compute ourselves using Cornea. Okay. So th this is a the very, very basic uh, example about how to use Cornea. So we take uh, one image, we load it using OpenCV, we do a very simple, very simple operation using Cornea, and then we convert it back to to NumPy, and finally we we, we plot it. So this is, I would say this is uh, well in general probably the, the the hello world for for computer vision, just uh, loading images, applying some color space transformations, and visualize. That's what you uh, or what I will expect 
someone to do first when it's working with a, a vision. So then uh, here uh, we have, uh, I, I don't, I, I won't go through all of them because um, I would like to to use the, the color version for that, but here, let me go very quickly. So you have some examples uh, about uh, how to do image blurring to in this case, uh, Lena. Lena is uh, probably the most famous woman in computer vision. So it's, it's an image uh, that has been, been using for a while where, uh, again, we load uh, this image with some uh, transformations. Then uh, we apply a Gaussian blur that probably, not sure if it's, you can see it well, but here we apply some sort of uh, uh, filtering, uh, smoothing, blurring, whatever in the image. Um, more fil you have uh, more filtering operations to apply different uh, blurrings to the images. Okay. So this is more or less the, um, the examples that I was mentioning during, uh, during the talk when I went through the different features we have. So yeah, uh, please uh, check it out. Um, these are very basic tutorials. Uh, from here, you can even download uh, the Python uh, code, the, the version in Jupyter Notebook. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, the, the interesting thing here, uh, first of all, is that uh, you have, or well, we try, we try to keep, um, well, the documentation, it's uh, every time that uh, there is a merge in the repository, it is updated. So it's all the time updated since we are getting, I would say two, three, four uh, pull requests and merges every week, depending on the timelines. Uh, Okay, but um, so yeah, the documentation it's con constantly updated somehow, and yeah, you have all here, uh, where, as I said, uh, some initial introductions uh, about how to install the tutorials. Uh, the, uh, the most important thing probably is uh, the API reference here, and yeah, that's it. Um, so now um let's go okay let me go through the the, the website uh, so here we linked uh this was the documentation tutorial will go to these tutorials that we will we will uh we were uh seeing before and then um the other thing is that discussion so this discussion bottom if it, okay so you see here that um it it, it points you to the uh, PyTorch discussion forum. Um, as I said, uh, well, here it's already the, we have a tag uh, under vision cornea. So yeah, uh, this, uh, actually this community, PyTorch community here in this case, it's, it's extremely active. So if you have any questions uh, when working with PyTorch, uh, just go there and I'm pretty sure that less uh, in the last uh, of uh, two hours, you will get an answer. So a lot of people is there. Um, uh, well, actually here, but you see here I'm saying now, there is this, uh, they are asking about cornea, see if, okay. Probably I will have to respond that. So yeah, um, if you have questions, just go, just go to PyTorch, uh, discuss, and yeah, feel free to ask, and probably yeah, you will get your answer very quickly. Okay, so yeah, and then the GitHub. GitHub is where we have uh, all the code. Um, so I'm not sure if you are uh, familiar with GitHub. Uh, so GitHub is a, is a version control uh, system that uh, we have all the source code here. Mm. Um, not sure if I have time to explain about it, but if you are interested, um, there are a lot of tutorials about how GitHub works. But uh, that uh, probably the most important thing is that this cl clone button that uh, you will take you will take the the path to the, the project, and then you can clone it to your machine and start working that. Okay. And then more advanced things that uh, in, you have here the buttons for forking or just to start following in case you are interested on some 
releases or if you want to participate in some discussions, which is uh, sometimes interesting. And okay, here um, you have all the code, just you can just navigate through that and look. Well, there is, a, okay, there is this search bar here that you can just type anything, um, shift, oh, sorry. If, and then if you click in the repository, uh, in theory, it will tell uh, all, well, we will search for the SIF uh, uh, word, and you, you can get all the different uh, references you have in the code, in that case, for SIF. Okay, what else? Uh, so here, if you go down, um, we have here very br briefly uh, some, again, some, Small overview about the library. Um, yeah, there's no that much here that that I already told to you. So mm -mm. then, uh, what else from GitHub uh, issues and pull requests? So um, let's go to issues. So here in issues, uh, we have, uh, as I'm mentioning, uh, it's very simple to open an issue. You go, need to go to issues, new issues. We we'll have already some template in case uh, there is a, you have a book report or if there is something in documentation that uh, it's missing. Or if you have a feature request or just a general questions. Um, in the case of uh, a book report, you will get to another page, which is uh, actually the, the, the standard issue thing. And in case you have a bug, uh, my sieve function, my sieve, it, it's not working. You can just uh, fill that and here, well, we have a template um, that to allow you to, to give uh, more descriptions. And then if uh, once you have filled all this form and you have uh, already describe uh, what's your problem. We use we, we encourage also to provide uh, some uh, information about which system, uh, Python version, you use a Korea version, so that uh, once this, uh, the, the issue submit, uh, so it will, it will appear here in the list of issues. And probably someone from, well, from anywhere actually, uh, that uh, will check that and everyone that can respond, so, um, yeah, so when you open issues or, or well, when you ticket an issue, it's, uh, it's always uh, recommended to provide as much information as possible so that the whole community can collaborate, not even people that it's uh, from the, the core team uh, that are actively de development, but uh, anyone uh, in GitHub or any of these uh, open uh, version control can contribute. So this is, uh, why uh, it's called open source because everything is open everyone can open an issue everyone can answer an issue everyone can fix um this is uh, the whole thing uh, about uh, open source right okay so um what else um these are issues and then um if you are more interested in contributing uh, again uh, here in the general page uh, mm -hmm. You have a link contributing to these contributing nodes. Um, this is a kind of a long document explaining well uh, first uh, what's what's about, about contributing, uh, several steps about how to fork. Um, here, yeah, we have. I hope we have some links uh, if anyone is not uh, very familiar with uh, GitHub or development, some coding standards, okay. How to do a pull request to contribute uh, in actual code. Um, yeah, and very, very, very basics uh, about how to start contributing in, well, in this case, Cornea, but it's 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 more or less uh, the same pattern for every uh, open source project. So, yeah, if you are interested in open source and you want to start contributing, um, maybe it's a good place. Uh, it's not a, comp a complicated project, Cornea. It's 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 not a small, but it's not that big as other projects. So, if you have uh, some curiosity about open source, yeah, just feel free to. 
come here and and start to to read and learn about that. Okay. Cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, now this is it about uh, <clears throat> the repository. Um, so here you see that uh, Cornea. So uh, it's well, if if you check out the, the path. Uh, it's github.cornea cornea the first cornea means that uh, we are under an organization that it's called cornea so we can go it through here github.com cornea okay here you will find the different sub projects that we have as an organization cornea organization okay so the, well the, the the most important obviously it's the, the, the core library and then we have uh, several sub projects like uh, for benchmarking uh, the examples that we are going through now and then some utilities uh, here we have a template project that uh, uses uh, pytorch lining with a uh, cornea and then other small pro projects like for the template for the documentation uh, and other small projects that at some point we started okay so yeah, what I wanted to show here is uh, the examples one. Let's go to examples. And as I mentioned uh, <clears throat> during the talk, so here uh, we have um, several examples, which are, are very similar to the tutorials we have, but all, well, I'm not sure you follow them, but they should. Uh, they are in Colab. So now we are going to, okay, we have a bit more of half an hour um yeah i will go through a couple of two maybe three and then uh, i will show you very easily how you can start running it um, you will see that it's very simple okay um let's go to this uh, one core adjust okay so you will get to this page so here um you will see that um the the uh, so the, the, this is the, the 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 result of the so well first of all so the you see that the the path is uh, the current examples color adjust dot i p y n b so what is extension this is the extension of the of the Jupyter notebooks okay but Jupyter notebooks are, are also allowed um, to to be embed in GitHub so that's very cool because you can have a Jupyter notebook that you you do something uh, on local in your local machine, and then you execute that Jupyter notebook that will produce uh, some results like these ones. Okay, but at the same time um, you could uh, you could export it, import it. I think it's uh, bidirectional uh, to uh, to collab. Okay, uh, Google Colab, uh, the same uh, was explaining Albert in his uh, tutorial. So, and in this case, uh, you can uh, save the, the static output of the Jupyter notebook or Colab, and then you can upload it to GitHub, and then as you just seen, uh, you can get the results uh, here in, in, in GitHub. So la let's open uh, the version of Colab. And then we'll go here, where um, I have already some some functionality. So to run this, it's very simple. So you just need to go to each of these blocks, okay? And in this case, I'll just clean this, clean this. Okay, you just need to run this. Okay. And anyway, and in theory, if everything works, cross fingers, we should get uh, in this case a cornea. In this case, uh, you see we are calling a pip install. This is kind of a shortcut uh, to get uh, uh, the the version, the, la the latest version in the master branch. So. It is this shortcut a git plus and then you you include the, the the full path to the git project and then yep and you will see the output that will uh, uh, through pip you will install uh, through the to the source 
and then uh, automatically we'll call the setup um, script and we'll install it in this case in in this instance of the of the call app. And here I just import Cornea and just to to verify that I have uh, the latest version, uh, I just print the Cornea version, which is the zero three uh, two, and this is some well reference uh, we add with the commit uh, version. Okay, so now uh, we have Cornea in this uh, call up instance. Now we are going to get uh, some data. I just, you see that I just uh, wget, which is a standard tool from, from Linux to download from any link. So I just download standard image. image. Okay. Then here I, I, <clears throat> I import matplotlib. Um, CB2, which is uh, OpenCV, and then NumPy. And you see here that uh, I'm doing the same as uh, I was explained during the, 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 the presentation. Uh, we load uh, this image that we just uh, downloaded. We load it uh, in OpenCV, so we'll get an MP array. In this case, uh, well, you know, uh, we convert uh, from R BGR to RGB, in this case, I directly use uh, um, OpenCV to do that. Why not? Okay. See. And then we plot the image, and then here uh, we start uh, using um, Cornea. No, not Cornea. Oh yes, yeah, we use Cornea. But also, you see here, I use uh, Torque Vision because uh, um, they have this nice uh, function that it's called uh, Make Grid. I'm gonna tell you why. So I have the, a predefined uh, function that that will plot the image. So and basically the the reason for this make grid function is that um, so we you know we already load an image, okay? But this image here in line ten it has this shape one uh, C, which is the channel, which is three because we are in RGB now, high width. But then, uh, since we want to make use of the the, the batch uh, processing in 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 PyTorch Cornea, what we're going to do is uh, we're going going to replicate uh, the image in the first dimension, which is the batch dimension, and by this we are going to create like a, a tensor containing four images. Okay, so you see here in line eleven. We can do that with uh, this expand um, function, which actually uh, it does. It's 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 not a, a a real copy, so you don't have actually uh, a copy of uh, of the the image. What it does is just a place with the stride of the tensor, so that uh, then um, you you can have a, a for a, like if you like if if you had a a copy of of the of the of the image um actually yeah I, i'm not actually this is um this operator is somehow tricky because in some cases you, i'm not sure if it in this time that the memory is continuous so but well for this case it's okay we, we don't have to back propagate here or or anything and here what we are going to do so um since uh, we are loading the image directly from OpenCV. The range of the image will be between z zero and uh, two hundred fifty-six. Okay. What we are going to do here, uh, first of all, uh, we are going to normalize normalize the data. Okay. So um, to do that, what we do, uh, we have this normalize function, and then we pass this tensor, which uh, actually it's. Let me write it here. Uh, it, should, it should be in whoops in u int u int eight. And since, uh, as I said before, we assume that all the operators in Cornea are in floating point, we cast it to float. Okay. And then uh, in, in this particular case, the uh, the, what we want to do is to normalize the, the image between zero and, and one. So basically, the, the first parameter, 
So that's a, you see here, that's another cool thing about a call up. If, if, you, if you move your mouse, then it will pop up uh, some, some, well, actually all, all the information that uh, we have defined it in the code. So you will get here all the, the parameters, the same as, as, as you had in the, the online documentation. Okay, so that's why it's uh, very, very important to have your code documented. And well, I can, t I can explain later, but also having proper uh, testing is also another important thing in open source. So here, uh, the first argument is the, the input tensor. Second one is the mean, and second, the standard deviation. So here, we want uh, since we want to normalize between uh, 0 and 1, and our range is between 0 and 256, uh, what we do is uh, we apply a mean 0 that will uh, subtract 0, and then we'll divide in 255. Uh, so, and in the end, we'll get this uh, tensor. Actually, we're gonna start playing with call up. And what we can do here, it just print the minimum values. Okay, and then if we run this, okay. See here, first output we get, it's the, the minimum value. So we have now the, the image between zero and one. Actually, we can do the same before. You see? So before we had uh, between 0 to 150 fibs, and the type, let's say, and uint 8. Okay. So here, uh, what we have done is that we just loaded an image, we cast it to, to a tensor, we normalize it, and then we just plot it. So uh, Let's proceed and let's do some processing. Okay, we here I have prepared to adjust different properties for for adjusting the the color intensity here uh, the brightness. Okay, see we are on collab. We can change numbers. Okay, you see, it's very simple. Same with contrast. Okay, this is zero. So in the end, a collab, it's, um, to me, it's a nice place to prototype when you have an initial idea, um, to start playing with um, some images to see what happens, just to do some assumptions um do not expect to do like uh, long trainings um you can do trainings but i think it's more useful for like a small proof of concepts about uh, some ideas but yeah as usually um yeah, at least uh, for me what i do is uh, just uh, to prototype or just to try things like these ones okay then yeah for the gamma well more or less the same. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> uh, mm -mm, what else? So um, this was uh, the color adjustment. Let's go to let me start closing this. What else? Uh, then we have another one for color conversions. Um, not sure if this is interesting. Probably the data augmentation is interesting since uh, you are going to do some trainings. Um, yeah. Um, we don't have collab here, but I think it's not working. But yeah, but we have the output. Um, yeah, let, let's go step by step. In, in this example. So first we had uh, here cornea, we download uh, some data. This is the output. Okay, um, yeah. So here we do some imports, uh, basically utilities from Torch, Torch Vision, cornea Torch, um, OpenCV, Matplotlib, <laughs> actually everything we have here, Peel. And basically here we have uh, like a template uh, of uh, what it is uh, a data set in, in, 
in PyTorch and we very easily define it, uh, how to create a, a data set loader, okay? Um, well, here uh, we pass probably the, the root, uh, yeah. So yeah, the, the way it's defined it, a, a data set in, in, Py, in PyTorch, it's, they have like a, some sort of a template, which basically <clears throat> in the constructor, you, you can define or you can uh, already load images or just to um, compute the path of uh, the, the images or already do some, depending on the strategy you want to do for training to prepare the, the data, anything. And then they have these uh, two methods that you have to uh, overload, which is the length. Uh, this will tell the number of samples you have in, in your uh, data set and then the get item, which is the important one that uh, we receive as a parameter, an index of the, of the number, uh, well, actually the position yeah, of, the, of the, the data sample you, you want to use. So this data set will happen, uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure about the last version, how it, it, it works internally, but it's, it should be multi-processing, so it, it handles uh, asynchronous. So you can assume that he, this get item um, will load one sample of your data, okay? One sample, it means, uh, in this case, we load an image and then a target that probably will be the, the, the label of that image. You can uh, internally do some um, some transformations, augmentations using. Uh, you can use you can use a Tor Vision, you can use Cornea, you can use OpenCV, you can use anything. So that's the other cool thing about PyTorch. It's flexible. Um, they provide you some tools, but uh, they don't block you to use other tools. And um, all the patterns are, I think, very clever in the way they were designed so that uh, it can be uh, way more flexible in the end. So here, uh, yeah, we return the image, some target that we define. This is just a random data thing. So some functions to plot, the boxes, and then here uh, we have defined this, um, this augment function that in the end just implements some of the utilities that we have been going through during the tutorial. Okay, so basically here we do, well, some normalization that we saw that we can do it using normalized function. We can do it just, in the end, it's just uh, dividing one image by 255, okay. Uh, we cast the tensor to images, well, whatever, okay? But in this case, uh, um, besides what is doing the function, the cool thing that we wanted to show is that, let me go here, point three, um, probably you recognize that from the, the slides, so that we can define, uh, we can use different uh, components from the, from PyTorch, which is the NNN sequential uh, module, which allows you to stack different uh, operators and create like a, a, sequ a, sequ a sequence of operations, okay? And here we make use of, uh, in this case, uh, the color cheater, which is a, a utility for, for doing a data augmentation on the, on the color space, so changing randomly the different properties like brightness, contrast, and so. And then uh, we stack here the, this color intensity with uh, some random transformation on the on the horizontal flip of, of the image. And you see here that we have uh, defined this uh, sequential operation that now it's a, uh, well, actually it's, a, it's an instance already uh, that we call it transform. Uh, this instance uh, type is uh, NNN module, which is one of the most basic uh, components in, in PyTorch. So, and here, uh, this transform now, it's uh, an instance of, uh, of an NNN module that basically uh, here in point four, if you see um, what we wanted to show how to use that using uh, uh, tensors in CUDA, okay? So here we, de we, <clears throat> we define a, a torch device in CUDA 
then well, we do some stuff with a random seed to make sure that we can reproduce uh, same results. This is important. Um, probably if you do some trainings later, probably they will tell you about uh, the importance of fixing seeds. If you want to do some training and you want to reproduce or debug, it's very important. Um, then here we, we instantiate the data set. We, <clears throat> we define it uh, beforehand. And finally, we well, this this other job uh, object that uh, it's called data loader. Uh, that uh, this is a, a another uh, a PyTorch uh, object that uh, its uh, its functionality uh, it, uh, it's to create the, the, the different batches. So that as a, as if you remember in this dummy data set we created. As I said, okay, this uh, get item happens uh, um, synchronously, uh, and it's a uh, get item will return just one sample. Okay, so then uh, using this uh, data set uh, along with this data loader, um, yeah, they have some predefined uh, parameters here, like the batch size, and this will automatically uh, uh, load uh, in, in different threads uh, the the data, and then and, and it will create that uh, will the end one they have. They call it collate function. They have a collate function default, or, or you could even uh, optimize uh, to create uh, your image batch. So in the end here, we will be creating a batch, as you see here, a batch of images that we will be applying the, the transformations Okay, that we define it. Okay, If you remember, these transformations were first color jitter and then a, a random horizontal flip. So is, if you see here the results on, on the on the top uh, row, I believe this is the, the original uh, images and the second one, you see that there are some changes in color and um, yeah, all of them are flip. Okay, it might not be because, okay, yeah, we put here a one as a probability, so we enforce here that they are all flip. So yeah, and here you can see that um, these uh, two sequences uh, are applied uh, independently at each of the images of the batch. So remember, this is a, a batch of images. So if you think about the data layout of this tensor, it will be four, uh, probably three, a uh, high width. Which I'm not sure it's the number. And on the, on the, and on the bottom, the, the transformation will be applied in parallel in GPU by the four. Uh, um, using uh, the, this previous uh, sequential, okay. And probably a bit more advanced thing, it's the same. So uh, if you remember when I was explaining about the, the, the data augmentation API that we said, okay, we, we mimic the Torch Vision uh, API, but we included this uh, property about uh, retrieving the, <coughs> the transformation that we applied. So actually, if, if you see here in the sequential, um, there is this parameter in each of the, the operators that's called return true. Okay, it's happening in color jitter and, and the horizontal flip. So what it will do now, the transformation, it will not only uh, return the transform images, but it will all uh, it will return also the the three by three uh, transformation that map from one image to the other. So, and this is very useful because, uh, for example, in the case of object detection, or in case you are doing key point detection, or for example, what else? Uh, others, uh, image uh, segmentation. Okay, you may have uh, some uh, extra data, metadata that uh, you would like also to augment. Okay, in the, in this case. Uh, we showed the example of uh, assuming that uh, we were uh, solving uh, an object detection problem. Okay, we might we might have uh, some bounding boxes, uh, no, about, uh, about uh, the object, the location of the objects. Okay, but okay. So imagine that we want uh, if we apply some transformation, geometric transformations. We want the the, the target in this case or the label however you want to call it, which are the bounding boxes, uh, we want to transform that. 
So, and this is why uh, we introduced this feature about uh, retrieving the transformation so that we, once we have uh, some metadata, in this case, uh, um, bounding boxes, we can transform, we can, that we can apply the same transformation that we applied in the images. We want to apply that transformation also in the metadata. So, in, and in this case here, you can see that uh, once, uh, well, if we take the first, uh, first uh, column, you will see that the this uh, the boat it's a flip, but also the in the in the in the bottom you will see that the, the bounding box it's it's rotated or, or it's kind of transformed uh, in the same way as the whole image. So yeah, that that's that's one of the other reasons that we introduced this property, which in contrast to for example in in. In Torch Vision, you, you cannot do that, or other libraries for data augmentation like uh, uh, Auto Augment or uh, what are the others? Well, there are, actually there are a few of uh, of data augmentation API um, yeah, libraries, and, and I don't I don't think that you can be flexible at all to do all those things. Okay. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> this was for the data augmentation. Um, yeah, let me go. Uh, what was the other one I wanted to show? Um, geometric transformations, probably. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, if you have time, this is uh, one bit more extended, um, extended uh, tutorial um about uh, how to apply again transformations to images so yeah here there is more text so if you have time just go ahead but uh basically here uh same uh we give uh, more details this is more uh for people that's working on, on on key points or local key points or it can be for um, people working for human pose estimation that they usually also work with uh, key points or maybe probably for robotics that you also uh, have uh, no, the, the usually the coordinates or the, or the frames for the different joints. So in, in, in this, in this uh, tutorial, uh, we explain uh, how, how to do a bit uh, to work with the geometry, okay? In this case, uh, as I said, it's, it's it's more applied to to local features, but it can it's you, I'm pretty sure you can get an idea how to extend it to to other to other problems. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I uh, in here, um, yeah, um, I will go more quickly in that because I think we are ten minutes and probably not sure if there are questions. So I will, will I will go qu quickly in that one. So um, yeah, and here I show you uh, how to plot an image, and then uh, in, in that case, I use OpenCV to render uh, 2D points, just to render, because uh, we don't have yet in PyTorch something uh, to render stuff, at least uh, as, as as the classical things we, we have been using. But um, yeah, so I use uh, OpenCV to render some points, okay? which uh, as the same as example as the bounding boxes, you can understand the points as metadata that you have uh, for, for your training. And then here, um, again, um, in this case, I make use of this augmentation called random affine that will produce this um, uh, affine transformation. In that case, uh, I parameterize to, uh, to randomly create a, 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 a rotation, rotation matrix. Uh, between uh, minus 45 and 45 degrees, okay? Which, uh, and if you see here, uh, we make use of this property of rate and transform. And here, once we call the, the instance of the transformation, we get uh, the transform image, which is this image two, that is the image on the, on the right side, okay? But then we get this, trans variable that's the transformation applied and this will be this uh, fine transformation and then we have uh, this uh, we have this interesting uh, <clears throat> function in cornea that's called transform points 
that it's a generic it's a generic function to apply some transformations uh, in points it can be 2d 3d 4d okay since uh, the, the the transformation goes according to to the number of dimensions of the of the <clears throat> of the of the points the point then uh, yeah, you will be fine you, you, in this case uh, so you have we have um, Point, and this point is one. It's a uh, it's it's a batch. It's a batch of two uh, <clears throat> D points, and then you can see here that it's very simple. So you 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 introduce the the transformation, the points, and then you will get back the transform points, which is point two. And then uh, once we plot all this information, you will see here that on the left side we have that the the same image uh, we <clears throat> we. We plot before with the original points, and then the second one, which is the image that uh, it already transformed, that give uh, that was returned by the this operator, the transformation operator, and then the points transform using the transformation we got from the transform um, module. Okay. So and here um, it's another example about uh, how to how to use uh how to do augmentation and reuse the, the information from the, the 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 sampling we got during the the transformations okay um i don't i'm, I'm not gonna go through all the whole thing but uh here uh, there are more examples about how to create models for data augmentation here and so similar examples you can see here that uh, we do generate random points, we apply different transformations, not only geometric, and then we transform the points. Okay. Then uh, another example about how to, this is a very fun example that we have about how to uh, transform an image and then using the same, um, the retrieve transformation, we can, uh, we can uh, go back to the original image. Okay. So yeah. Just uh, feel free to, to go to the examples and yeah, just check it out. Uh, should be very easy. And most of them are in, are in Cola. Um, yeah, so the examples are here. So I think we are running out of time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish uh, this part. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to, to the camera and, Try if you have any questions. Um, yeah, just go ahead and ask questions, feel free. And yeah, and as I said, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you have any, any, any question about the project, uh, we, are, we are actively online all the time. Um, the community it's completely open. If you feel free that, that there are some some features that probably um, uh, will have yet there that could be useful for robotics specific things for robotics. Uh, I, I believe that, that there is uh, a lot of room uh, to implement those things. So yeah, just uh, yeah, don't hesitate to to ask or just uh, reach us. Yeah. From my side, I think that's it. Um, yeah, just go ahead with questions or otherwise, um, Anna or not, I'm not sure who's, who's going next now or, but from my side, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. Thank you, Edgar. Thank you very much. I think Victor is here also. And, uh, we have a few minutes for, mm -hmm. to start, uh, okay. to the next, uh, we have here a question i think we have a question yeah yeah uh yeah can you so read that, it yeah 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 sure yeah yeah so the question uh, says uh does cornea support dnns without additional library dependencies uh the answer is no so in the end uh we rely uh basically on pytorch so all the neural networks part it's it's in pytorch so yes you need pytorch and i don't think that uh well the library itself, it's, it's based on PyTorch, so it only works on PyTorch. I'm not sure if it was more or less the, the line of uh, the direction of your question. 
But in the end, just uh, Cornea just implement high level uh, functionalities uh, to work with, with images, to the images, probably now we're more in 3D. But in the end, it's uh, just operators. So we don't have like le uh, learn models. Uh, well, we, we provide a couple of interfaces for uh, deep descriptors for learn models, but the, the, at least the, the policy is that uh, we, don't ha we are just uh, have free functional functions, okay? which means that there are no learn parameters. And one of the reasons is that um, there are a lot of frameworks that already provide some models uh, with uh, fancy state of the art models. But usually all these uh, uh, frameworks in the end, uh, they got uh, deprecated because you know uh, th these things uh, are, are, are going very fast. So, and that's why we decided just to keep the library very at low level so just with very basic tools, like uh, in the end, it's like as OpenCV at some sort that you have uh, all the low level uh, tools to, to next uh, build high level stuff. That's more or less the, the whole idea. <clears throat> okay, mm -hmm. so if we don't have more questions, we will uh, thank you very much to Edgar, your presentation, yeah, sure. and we will go to the workshop that we have programmed for this afternoon. Thank you very much, Edgar. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, bye. bye. I stopped the...